Hey everybody, the video you have all been waiting for. Some of you maybe like for seven years, it's finally arrived. That's Irish O'Fell. I'll get one of these days. That's Corey Clark. He's the managing editor of Warchant.com, the ultimate sample sports source. He's our lead and senior writer. I'm Maslow. I do the videos and stuff. Use the promo code Warchant30 for 33 days of access to our website. Also hit the thumbs up because again, you've been waiting for this video for so many years. Gentlemen, on Wednesday or is it today? Tuesday. I can't even keep up. It's Wednesday today. I'm sorry. Horrible. Story. It's going to be a great video. Florida State's football only facility is now one step closer to realization. They announced on Wednesday the um, the football only facility is going to be, I think, 150,000 square feet, they said, which is going to, you know, for whatever John Thrasher said a few years ago about gold standard, from what I saw in my preliminary research, that's larger than Auburn's, that's larger than Florida's, that's larger than Clemson's, that's larger than Oklahoma's, that's larger than South Carolina's. Um, I could probably keep going on. But Ira, what's going to happen now, man? Is, so this thing is happening. It's a real thing. There's photos. We can almost touch it. Well, there was photos before. If you all mm. remember from 2018, we had we had some photos at the time. The ones you're showing right now are the current photos, which is uh, great. Yeah. So if you leave that view up, what we heard, what we saw in 2018 was to the left side of that. Up, oh, up, oh, go back. Yeah, one. I'm trying yeah, to that, get larger, but I can't. I'm just going to keep it at that size. Hopefully, that's good. Yeah. Enough. So that wall on the far left, that's where the original one was going to be, and it was going to be like multi. It was going to be much higher and shorter, and it wasn't going to wrap around the practice fields the way this one does. So this is a new concept. Uh, it's taken a lot of different avenues to get to this point, but, but, and we can kind of revisit some of that. We may want to do a 30 for 30 on the FSU <laughs> yeah. operations center, because this started back with Jimbo was here. It's gone three different coaching staffs and now had their imprints on this, uh, this, I guess where they are now. And this, we, we believe this is the, the final iteration. Uh, they're raising the money. They're getting closer to having all the money. They're getting closer to announcing when it's going to be built. Um, but this is what it's going to look like. And I think this is a much better version than the original one. The original one was they, they weren't going to impin, in, I guess, infringe it all upon the practice fields. They were going to keep the two practice fields the same length that they are now and just have the building go alongside of it and be taller. But now they're actually giving up part of the practice fields to kind of, to kind of bring the whole project together. I think it's a better look. And as you said, uh, they're going big. I mean, 150,000 square feet. It's, uh, it's not the uh, not so gold standard as John Thrasher said uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, and when you know the the issues of that campus, specifically that part of campus, what what else could have been done? Like, yeah, you can refurbish more. All right, well, that what what are you putting? Not that you're putting lipstick on a pig, but you're not because Morris Center isn't a pig. But that's a that's a huge undertaking. And are you really um, helping the program that much with something like that? I. I thought when I when I read the initial release that it was going to be adjacent to the Al Dunlap training facility, I'm like, oh, they went with that thing again, the, the little the building that goes straight up and looks like a huge dorm room. But no, man, that's really nice. And I think that's a that's the best they could do with that situation um, is to wrap it around this field. I think it looks I think it looks really neat. I was disappointed there doesn't look to be like a recording studio in there. No, the petting zoo that we've talked about, Aslan, I don't see that pictured anywhere, mm. which is odd. But when you look at what that – what because now I can – now I envision it. I could never really envision it before. But now I can envision, okay, that's where you walk through. That's the front of it. That's right where the practice facility is now, where that big brick uh, wall is, the Jimbo wall that you can't see over its 10-feet wall. Now that's going to look like that. It, I think it I think it looks great. I really do. I'm not a homer by any stretch. I think I think that looks really neat. And, you know, I, I, I'm sure some people might have trepidation about, man, you're cutting into the practice field. So now they only have one full practice field and another one that's 60 yards long. I'm like, man, Knock we watch – how many practices did you watch, Ira? Eight? How many times are they using 100 yards of any of those fields? And they never do. Yeah. Remember, they used to – back in the day, they had like three practice fields. Back yeah. in Aslan, when you were a student. And uh, then, they, then they've gone to two. But, yeah, there's – you're talking about 100 football players. And, you know, a lot of times they're on just one field and then they also have the indoor facility so they can yeah. send a bunch of guys into the indoor facility, which is basically a full football field when they need as well. So I think it's yeah clever from that standpoint that you don't need all that space, um, need as much space as you want. You know, some of the reasons I think that they also they wanted it over there, because to your point, it, there were a lot of people who wanted them to reconfigure the more athletic center. And um, 
you know, because that's at the football stadium, the coaches' offices are already there. There were some people who really felt strongly, man, just make the more athletic center, which right now encompasses a lot of other sports, classrooms, a lot of different things. All the athletes from different sports use that weight room, use that uh, lunch room, have it just be dedicated to football and then build something else for these other sports. And that was kind of part of this, you know, this process over the last two or three years where they've kind of started and stopped and started and stopped is really coming up with a clear vision. But I think I got the impression that Mike Norvell and his staff and, and this administration really wanted it where it is now, where it's it's basically a football complex. It really is because you have the indoor facility, you have the practice fields, you've got this weight room. Apparently, this new weight room is going to be unbelievable. Um, you've got the athletic training stuff, the cryotherapy, whatever, all these different things um, all right there. So the football players can be kind of – it's just easy to get to everything. The way things are right now, things are a little bit more spread out on different floors and, and all that. So, um, yeah, it's going to be cool. The, you know, Gene reported last week uh, that uh, – in a War Room report that it's he, – he knew this concept was coming. He reported that, but he also said he thought those projections were about $70 million. FSU did not include that uh, in the release today. They also, um, you know, they didn't include information about when it's going to be, construction is going to start. So we're not sure on that. Uh, but it looks like it's going to be about a $70 million project. They've already raised $43 million. And I really think the reason they announced it now without the actual, uh, the firm date of construction is because now they want to go out and do more fundraising and get closer to that $70 million before they commit to it. Because remember three years ago, they did it the other way. They they announced it, and then we're going to start the fundraising. But then when the football team went up, yeah, belly up in 2018, the fundraising dried up as well. So this, I think this is a, a little bit more prudent um, approach instead of announcing a construction date because the other one was supposed to be started. The other one, construction was supposed to be complete by July of this year. Well, that didn't work out so well. Yeah, man. I mean, pragmatically, the only thing that I can nitpick at is that the limited parking that was available around Doak is now gone uh, with that addition, but no one's going to care about that because, you know, most of you folks probably aren't students any longer. Um, but man, it's gorgeous. Uh, it's it's hard to really complain with anything. I mean, the, the amount of windows and just the out, the overlooking of the field. Uh, I'm not worried, uh, again, about the, the, the cutting off of 40 yards of practice field because, again, they've They've got an indoor facility. They've got 120 yeah. yards on the other side, and uh, they can put you know linebackers and defensive linemen on that short field. And that's plenty of room for both those uh, segments to get their work in. It looks great, man, and uh, it's it's huge. Again, 150,000 square feet is larger than any other thing I found. Um, I don't care about the price tag because I'm not spending money on it. I don't know if people want to complain about that. Auburn's is 91 million dollars. Florida's is 85 million. Uh, USC, Southern Cal, actually, they spent $70 million on theirs, but that was back in 2012. Uh, I still, yeah, no. I, I, deal, I wanted more to get renovated, but looking at this, it's it's hard to really, you know, gnash your teeth and throw a fit over it. But I, it would have been nice to see them do more. I think Ohio State's had the, the Woody Hayes Athletic Center since 1987, and they've just continually upgraded it with $10 million, $15 million projects every four or five years. But I guess maybe they're too far behind the curve to, to do that to more. I always thought they could keep going higher on uh, the more, but they're not doing that. They're doing this. I like it, man. I do. I think it's cute. Well, they are, and they are going to um, – this wasn't announced today, but I mean, the impression we got when we spoke to Michael Alford on a video we put up a couple weeks ago, it, it sounds like they're going to they're gonna renovate more, but for the other sports. And so they'll yeah, have a better – that was academic. in the release. That was actually in oh, the was release. It? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I didn't get, I didn't catch that part, but yeah. So they're going to renovate more as well of we'll a better academic center in there. They're going to have, uh, there's going to be more functionality for the other sports. And uh, you know, now football is going to have their, I guess, palace, but um, you know, I, what's interesting, I guess just this process is and to the point as I made earlier, the uh, not so gold standard, you know, th that was kind of part of the, just the, all the drama about this from day one. Cause really this, this facility was at the heart of Jimbo leaving. You know, Jimbo wanted this built overnight in 2017. And when they told him it was going to take a few years, they had to do the fundraising and all that. That's kind of what led him to get wandering eyes um, and, and go to Texas A&M. And then, you know, Willie comes in. There was talk then about there was a push to do the Moore Center. Willie didn't want that. He thought he called it a Band-Aid. He didn't say lipstick on a pig, Corey. He said, he, he said yeah. we, we, don't, we don't need a Band-Aid, which uh, – did not ingratiate him with the, uh, the the administration. They weren't real thrilled with that. But uh, And then, you know, once they started losing, he lost his vote. And now here we are. 
And, you know, I do think this is kind of the gold standard. And that was one of the things Michael Alford said last week. Like, let's not build something that's going to be out of date before we even get it, you know, shovels in the ground. So I think they are trying to be ambitious with it, but without some of the bells and whistles that you see at the other, you know, some of these other schools. Yeah, but the thing I was thinking about looking at that, because you're right, Ira, it's like a, it looks like a pro complex where the IPF is connected to everything else. And you're pra- you have an outdoor practice field, an indoor practice field, and your palace all within right there, right there within a hundred and 200 yards of each other, as opposed to like, say if they built it where the intramural fields were, right. You know what I mean? Like this is all connected. And I, this is where you practice every day. This is where those kids are going to live for six to eight months a year. Um, so yeah, make it nice, make it all confined to that space. It looks, it just does not look like you're, you're being cheap at all. That looks like a, I know we're going on a rendering, but what they want to do, whether it's the gold standard or not, it's a standard enough that I don't know how many kids are going to be like, nope, I'm not going to Florida State because of their their football facility did it wow me like Georgia's or Florida's did. They are not going to lose recruits because of that building right there. They will get some probably, maybe, but they're certainly not going to lose any unless a kid wants to get his hair cut and he's upset that they don't have a barber shop inside or they don't have the recording studio or something like that, which maybe you don't want that kid anyway. But now you can compete with the Auburns and the Alabamas and the Georgias and Floridas of the world when it comes to that building, because that building, I assume the way it looks from the rendering anyway, no 17 or 18 year old kid is going to think, man, this is a cheap place. And that's it. That looks yeah. like a, that looks like a palace, man. And, uh, you know, I think one of the things that, you know, a lot of people will say, you know, a lot of longtime fans or, you know, kind of old school fans will, you know, kind of bristle at the idea that you have to, be in the arms race. But the reality is the way recruiting works for a lot of these kids is they make these trips. And this was something Jimbo said when he was pushing for it in 2017, when, when Clemson just started their, theirs was these recruits will, they'll make a trip. They'll come from California, come to the Southeast and go to Clemson, then go to Alabama, then go to Florida, go to Florida state. They'll, and they'll visit all these schools and you don't have to have the nicest one, but if everyone else has a facility, a really nice facility, and you're kind of like, okay, well, we're get, getting this golf cart, and we're going to take you over here to to the to the Moore Center. Then get back in the golf cart. We're going to take you over here to the practice facility to have it all there. And it just it just gives the impression that you're taking football as seriously as these other schools are. So that I really think that it's not necessarily trying to wow people, um, but it's just trying to let them know that you're committed, and it's a big part of uh, recruiting. And the, one other thing about the price, because I know a few people asked on Twitter. You know, how can they even be doing this initiative? They also announced recently the Doe Campbell Stadium renovations. You know, how can we be doing all these things when we're financially strapped on top of COVID? Uh, You know, part of it is a lot of this money has been raised over the last few years when they started the campaign. The other thing is they, they, the rent, the Doak renovations, they expect to be a money maker. And the plan there is by making those renovations, improving the suites and all of that, it's going to bring an additional revenue. And they, they, they're saying, We'll see if how it plays out. They think re- revenue from that will help also uh, go towards this project as well. So we'll have to see. But but it's not all going to be – it's not out of the athletics department budget. It's from uh, donations specifically for this and then also revenue they get from the uh, Doak renovations. So is this going to happen then? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, not, not yeah. trying to be a, yeah. be a smart aleck about it, but, I mean, you mentioned earlier that you know, once once the 2018 season happened, all that excitement before the kickoff uh, quickly dissipated. So did the dollars. So if if you know six and six is what everybody says is going to be fine, like if if that isn't okay, I mean, I I just don't know. Um, is can you put the genie back in the bottle a third time on this? That's a great question. I mean, I, I gotta feel like they're very they feel very good about the commitments because and there's two different kinds of pledges when people make donations. There's pledges and then there's actually cash in hand. Uh, and sometimes when they float out numbers, you don't know is, is the is the number when they say we've got one hundred million dollars committed or eighty million dollars committed. Is that cash in hand or is it pledges? I got to feel like they feel really strongly about the cash in hand um, to announce this again. But they are going back out again and they're going to get donations. And and uh, that's going to kind of uh, cap it off. I would say it's going to happen. But, man, I thought it was going to happen in 2018. So I, you know, I can't say for sure. What does the Coracle say? Yeah, I think, yeah, man, I, I think it's it's got to happen. It's just got to. It's a fact of life. It's a fact of college football. We we You can't be the only major program in the South without one of these. You just can't. 
And I think this is the best of a not great situation when it comes to just the geography of where you'd had to put it. I think when you look at that and how it's connected to the IPF, how it wraps around, uh, you still got 75 yards of one football field and 100 yards of the other, um, plus the 100 yard IPF. You got plenty of practice space and you have this to uh, compete with the other schools you're recruiting against. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's got to happen. It's just, I, I feel like at some point it's just got to. And this seems like third time's the charm. Um, I hope Jimbo sees this. You know, this is kind of the house that Jimbo sort of built, right? He got the ball rolling. Uh, maybe he can donate some of his money, and, and they could put his name on it. But so he, uh, he go, you go by your your ex's house, and she finally does that. She gets the house, and then she does the the renovation you always wanted to have done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And Jimbo so, might get a little misty eyed <laughs> seeing that, but uh, but yeah. So I, I think it, I think it will happen. Uh, like Ira said, I think they're they're far enough along in the process to 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 unveil this. And to unveil it to people and then try to get people excited about donating the people that need to be excited about donating and um, and get make this thing a reality. But I, I do think that this time it will actually be a reality. And I, and just to follow up real quick, I, and we don't know the time frame. We don't know when they're going to start construction. Right. We don't know when it's going to be built. But I do think it's going to be pretty soon. I, I don't think this is a open ended from the impression I get. This is not an open ended. Hey, this is something theoretically we want to do. I think we'll hear something pretty soon about, you know, when, when they plan to actually start construction. The last time the plan was it was going to start really at the end of a season and then be ready. I think by, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, it was like the next year. It was going to start um, like the day after the Florida game in 18 yeah. and then be ready for 19. And that did not happen. They weren't, they did not break ground. I would think they'd do it. Like that would be the plan this time, right? Ira, if they're going to break ground to break ground the day after the last home game. That's what and you then think. You could have it ready for 2022. Yeah, so I mean, I would think that's the earliest. The other, uh, uh, that's you know, that's ambitious. The other way would be one year after the plan for Doak. If they can do Doak renovations, the earliest they're going to do that is twenty three, twenty four. Um, you wouldn't want both projects going at the same right, time. Right, you'd want so, this before that, yeah. and you'd want this before that. Frankly, I think. Um, yeah, probably. What so, is cryotherapy, by the way, Aslan? Cold, cold, like uh, like not ice chambers, but like a like super cold tubs cold chambers that you like go into. Like you, you can like it wraps around you. It's like a metal cylinder almost. Oh, like, all right. Your head's above it. Like you'll see like the steam coming off it from the the cold, or the dry ice or whatever they use in it. Not dry ice, but nitrogen. Wasn't, it's, wasn't for the, it's for recovery. Didn't in Hard Knocks? Didn't like Chad Owens have one of those or something? Like the, the Chad chamber. Johnson. Chad Johnson. It was a Chad Chad Johnson. Yeah, I'm sorry. Probably didn't, I think so. Yeah, a lot of guys do. Yeah, it's it's uh it's been around for a while, you know. So. But yeah, so yeah, and right now FSU's got they do have like cold pools that I think also they're hot and cold pools that they've got. But I think the they they've been uh, you know not in disrepair, but the, they're very old, antiquated. So they need this. I mean, it's not just yeah. about the recruiting; they need better facilities. And then you don't want to spend the money to fix what's in more right now if you're going to get new ones at this new facility. So it just makes sense for a lot of reasons. Yeah, I think it's definitely full speed ahead. Uh, with a plan to do it. Where do you think Willie's $1 million is going to? Part of the private event space? Like maybe I feel like probably PA. back to his buyout. Maybe the PA system, the, the PA system, and the maybe like, you know, the mm, light. Yeah, uh, maybe, mm. maybe. But yeah, the, the um, I wish they gave some more, maybe I got to dig up and find, I wish they gave some more breakdown about the, uh, about the actual training space, the, uh, like the weight room. Because I know the weight room, that was something that happened, I think, in 2004. And man, it's it's like in a cor in a nondescript corner of Dope Campbell, and as Ira mentioned, like all the other student athletes can go use it, and it it that's the one thing that definitely has not held up well in comparison to everybody else. So, I, and you saw the photo; yeah. of it. it looks really really impressive. I wish there was a, like a breakdown of the the amount of equipment and the size of it, but it looks like it's pretty on par. Well, with and not that anybody maybe cares about it, but this should help all the other student athletes too that don't yeah. play football because yeah, now they're going to clear out the football team from that weight room and you're going to more is going to be all yours instead of having to compete with football. Right. I think there's that there's teams right now on this campus that their, their gym, their workout time in that weight room is like five in the morning because that's the only time they can get it because right. you know, football's got it this time. Basketball's got it that time or whatever. So yeah, it's uh that, that, that should help those other programs. And uh, but yeah, the weight, the, the weight room they're going to have in that building from what I understand is just going to be unbelievable. And with the glass, you're going to be able to see it, I think from the field. Um, and it's just good. The functionality of it's going to be really cool that those guys can, you know, walk out right onto the field, 
go back in. I think they're going to have a locker room over there. I think they're going to have both locker rooms. I think they're going to have their yeah. normal locker room for game day and then a locker room over there. And then, uh, you know, just be able to, the meeting rooms right there. The co- staff can be in their offices and watch guys during, during practices. I mean, it's just they can film from up there. From a functionality standpoint, I think it's going to be really a huge positive. They can maybe even watch the players when they're not supposed to be able to watch the players too. Hey, watch yourself. Watch yourself. Come on, Aslan. They're not doing that. Here's Let's a quote from Coburn about uh, how the more athletic facility is going to be used uh, moving forward for uh, sports medicine, dining, things like that. Man, and last thing for me is just, you know, you, you hear all these ADs when they go around and talk to booster clubs and, you know, alumni groups about how sports is, you know, the front porch of the university. And, you know, I don't know where you would really say that the main entrance of like Dote Campbell is. I mean, maybe most people would say the Bobby statue, but then you got the sportsmanship statue on side C and then you got gate A with the nice mm-hmm. waterfall and, and the stained glass. And then you got, you know, the, the school of theater and all that, or not theater, but cinemas is there. This is, I mean, this is gorgeous, man. Like this is, I, I'm, I, I can see it. I can, I can envision what it's going to look like when you drive up and you see this. I don't know, man, that's like probably 30 feet up, like three stories glass. I mean, it's, it's gorgeous, man. Or Florida Tampa has, has set their stake. I'm, I, I approve. Not that anybody cared. I approve. And it fits in with the, with the, I guess the motif of the whole camp, the whole sports part of the campus with the bricks and the, you know, Scott Spiker uh, tennis center or the, the track where they have a lobby that's like that, not nearly like, not nearly that nice, but <laughs> I, you know, why would it be? But um, yeah, man, I, I just think that, that it's going to fit in with the whole, uh, the, the whole, tr- everything about it fits into much better than I thought it would when you, when you heard the initial rumblings of where it would be. I think it looks really nice, man. I really do. Um, it's, I, I know that's not uh, profound, but that it's just a it's a nice building, man. It looks like it's going to be a really nice building, and it's going to be one of the jewels of the campus. Yeah. Well, and maybe the that, jewel. And I think that touched on Aslan's point with with more, you know, with, with the athletic, with the with Doak and all the buildings around it. There isn't really like a featured front entrance, but this will have that. Um, and it's also the other thing I you know I was thinking about earlier. This really is amazing. I mean, think about these last few weeks for FSU. They've announced plans, initial, or extremely early plans, or extremely premature plans, whatever it was. Very preliminary, whatever. True. Very preliminary plans for Doe Campbell Stadium. That's not set in stone, but if that happens, renovating Doe Campbell Stadium, you've got this. Um, you know, they've, they've just, their, their plan for name, image, and likeness. And uh, I don't know if you guys watched that video of them, you know, basically telling kids that they're going to get rich if they come become athletes at Florida right. State University. Your brand I mean, it's just, matters here. Your brand matters here. Yeah. It's a, I mean, it's a, they are very ambitious. I mean, you know, again, Florida State's taking a lot of heat through the years for being kind of late to respond, to kind of slow to respond to different things. Um, you know, and then Mike Norvell announcing these youth camps he's going to have over, all over the state. I mean, there's a lot going on over there. They're definitely, uh, not to use another school's phrase, but they definitely seem all in. Mm. Mm. There you go. Sounds. Sorry. Last thoughts, Corey? Uh, no, I like you guys. You guys are good good people. Ira, you want your uh, standard one last thing? No, I just did it, I think. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> Scott, Scott Sam Felt's got one, one big thing. Ira seems to be like one last thing. One, yeah. one last thing. He hasn't talked enough in these 22 minutes or whatever. So, yeah. No, I'm good. Thanks, Aslan. Thanks, Corey. Use that promo code, the bottom or chant 30 for 30 for days of access to the ultimate sum of sports. There's plenty more coverage of this from Gene, Ira, and Corey over on the website. Gentlemen, thanks for your time and your knowledge. Thanks, man.